please. So uh, I will stop my video. Yeah. Thanks, Eduardo and Miriam, for this opportunity. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, depending on your local time, everyone. Thanks for joining. So in this uh, few lectures, I will be trying to give a brief overview of what is neutrino and neutrino physics. And uh, my apology first is that uh, it is a very vast subject. So it is uh, practically very difficult for me to cover uh, many things of neutrino physics in these few lectures. So I'll cover a handful of things dep uh, depending on my biasness. And so before we start, I like to first refer for students few of these books. There are some, these are some beautiful books. And in throughout, I will be citing, uh, mention, uh, talking about these books uh, and some papers, depending on my biasness. And my apology again, I won't be able to cite all those papers. So, uh, so in these lectures, uh, what my plan is in the first lectures, uh, first few minutes, I will try to give a brief you know, overview or motivation towards fundamental physics, why we do fundamental physics, then uh, before going to neutrino physics, then I will give a brief history of neutrino physics and talk detail about neutrino oscillations for the students. And finally, I will give some phenomena you know, if time permits and end up with some questions in the neutrino physics. So let's start. First, uh, while starting, I would like to present this cartoon. So this beautiful cartoon is actually tells about why we do fundamental physics. So it is like in the fundamental physics, we do various kinds of research in the particle physics and everyone try their bits and parts and join together to understand nature of fundamental physics. And uh, so in this cartoon, it is showing that how five blind men can discover an elephant. So you can see someone can touch the feet of an elephant and he will tell, oh, I got something like feet, someone will touch tail, someone will touch like head and blah, blah. And they will add up together and tell at the end of the day that it is something like, you know, elephant or it is an elephant. So this is the sole purpose of doing fundamental research. So uh, first I like to say for the students in, in this uh, high energy physics, our convention generally for the calculation is uh, to make it our calculation easy, we consider C and H cross equal to one. And when you take then one, then your unit of mass and energy becomes same, which are either electron volt or million, million electron volt or giga, giga electron volt. And unit of time and length become your one by energy. So this is a uh, mere convention. And whenever you uh, need those units, proper units, you put back this uh, C and H and get your exact units. That is the logic. So let's start to understand fundamental physics. Let's talk about this. Uh, in nature, we know we have a four fundamental interaction or forces which explains our nature. So these are namely called gravitational interactions. And everyone knows that gravitational interaction acts on everything. Since it is the weakest among all the forces, so its weak uh, action is very weak. So only uh, be a massive object like Earth and Sun actually feel this. And this is a uh, mediator messenger particle is called graviton, which is a hypothetical particle not yet observed. On the other hand, we have weak interactions, uh, which is uh, quark and leptons experience this and the mediators particular uh, W plus minus and Z boson. On the other hand, we, everyone knows about these electromagnetic interactions, which mostly act on electric charges. Uh, and uh, the photon is the messenger. And then we have a, uh, the fourth one is the strong interactions uh, experienced by quark and gluons and messenger particles are grown. So, and th this last uh, row shows that unit of which is the strongest among all these. So if I consider electromagnetic is the order one strong strength, then you can see the weakest is the gravitational one and strongest is the, you know, uh, the strong interaction. So. First question in the fundamental physics terms, why we have these uh, so many uh, forces? Can we uh, I, um, uh, give a proper theory which unify them? So unification of these forces or fundamental interaction is one of the uh, most interesting you know, 
in the uh, things in the fundamental physics. So in that uh, respect, many people have studied from several decades how to unify those forces. So first, you know, uh, in our school days, we have studied about electricity, magnetism, and light separately. However, in the college days, we know that all these three branches can be combined in electromagnetism, which is governed by this Maxwell equation, very famous, we all know. So you can see that these three branches can be combined. Later, we know that electromagnetism and weak interaction can also be combined, which is called electroweak interactions. And this is given by uh, Salam, uh, Glashow, and Weinberg. For that, they got Nobel Prize around 1971. Then comes, can we unify electroweak interaction with strong interactions? And indeed, people developed a uh, theoretically consistent and experimentally verified model called standard model, which actually explain all these three you know, uh, fundamental interactions. And then uh, we have a gravity. And we know that standard model doesn't explain gravity. So questions comes, can we combine standard model and gravity and give a consistent model uh, which can unify all the four fundamental interactions? Indeed, people are very smart and there are various you know, theoretical approach or theoretical frameworks which actually unify all these you know, four fundamental interactions. And many of them, like you know, uh, string theory, super gravity, Suzy guards. Uh, out of all these, these super, uh, uh, lots of them are very popular. And super gravity is the one which got, uh, got the most recent special breakthrough fundamental prize given to this uh, Peter Ben, uh, Sergio Ferrara, and Daniel Fredman. You can see, so we do fundamental physics research in a mere interest, um, that we are mere interested on the it. But if you're interested, it's so interesting then you can see, you can get at the end of the day, a big prize also. So you can see this is, these guys got $3 million prize and it is a, you know, almost three times more than the Nobel prize. So, it, uh, so doing fundamental physics is fun as well as it is worth it if you can do some breakthrough work. So let's go back uh, to standard model and talk about standard model because our interest is on neutrinos. So try to understand from the standard model perspective view. So in the standard model, we have a fermions, bosons, mainly two categories of particles. And the fermions are categorized mostly in the two classes. We have a quarks, which are three families. So this is uh, the first family, second family, and third family. Similarly, we have leptons. We have a uh, first family, second family, and third family. Then we have a bosons, and bosons are, uh, gauge bosons are force carrier. So we have a photon, gluon, and uh, Z boson, and W plus minus. And we have, lastly, we have a Higgs boson. So we know now Higgs is the one which is responsible to give masses for to all the fundamental uh, particles and uh, which was discovered in uh, 2012 by LAC. Uh, and it uh, got the Nobel Prize to Englert and Higgs at, at 2013. So this is the last missing objects in the standard model to be discovered. So question comes here, the, as I to, uh, shown that all those particles, but in the fundamental physics, when you give a particle, it do, doesn't make any sense. In that theoretical perspective view, you have to write down a Lagrangian. So if you know the correct Lagrangian for a particle, you know everything about it. So you see, this is the huge Lagrangian. Actually, it describes everything in these pictures. All those particles, their behavior are actually explained here. Uh, so you can see the, how messy it looks like, but physicists are very smart. If you are smart enough, then you can write this whole big Lagrangian in a uh, nice cup of tea, tea cup, you can mention it. And this is the, your Lagrangian here. So uh, after giving a brief overview uh, about standard model particles, uh, like I like to mention here, uh, out of many successes, few successes of the standard model, which are very consistent with uh, experimental findings. So these are the prediction for W, Z boson, gluon, and top, uh, top and charm quark. Precise measurements of the fine structure constant alpha. Prediction for the Higgs boson, and many more. However, uh, there are many you know, uh, uh, unresolved issues or theoretic, theoretical or observational uh, evidences which 
tells us that standard model is not a complete theory. There are something more beyond the standard model. Uh, so among such like matter and matter asymmetry is one of the fundamental queries in the funda in our particle physics. Like why there we see in the in this universe the more matter than antimatter. This is one of the fundamental questions. Many experimental evidence also suggests dark matter and dark energy, which we did not see yet. So this uh, and uh, another thing is the non-zero neutrino mass. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, neutrinos. So in the standard model, neutrinos are massless, but now we know that neutrinos have a mass. So question comes here, uh, how to explain this mass, which are not uh, in the standard model. And maybe this neutrino mass, uh, the origin of neutrino mass is related to mental antimatter asymmetry and which can relate to the, you know, the fundamentals of nature. So these are the very, uh, some of the unresolved issues, but our main focus is on neutrinos. So we will be mostly talk about neutrinos. So let's start with the beginnings. So and the, the idea of neutrinos is more than uh, 70, 80, 90 years old. Uh, however, the first, you know, the uh, concepts or uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, neutrinos or some particles uh, exist or not is comes uh, in the beta uh, in the observed beta decay which was first observed by uh, Jens Chadwick. So what he observed is that a, a, a nucleus decays to a beta particle and its uh, daughter nucleus. So uh, mind here is that during 1914 that neutron was not known. So this is a later cartoon uh, something like A goes to E with giving a, a B. So this is the two-body decay from A. So you know, for a two-body decay, you can, from the conservation of energy, you can find the energy of electron. So it, so it is just a simple kinematics. And now you can see, if you know the mass of neutron, mass of proton and mass of electron, of course, we know velocity of light. So you can see these numbers is a single discrete number. However, this should be verified by experiments. In the experiments, what they have shown that they, rather they, they need to see this, um, the discrete number, but they have seen the pattern. So this is a continuous pattern. So this is a clear violation of energy of conservation in the beta decay. Similarly, this emission of beta particle shows an integral ch change in spin. So this is also a clear violation of uh, angular momentum conservations. So in this kind of beta, uh, beta decay, during that time, people thought maybe this conservation of energy as well as uh, angular momentum are not you know, maintained. So people uh, loosely uh, trying to convince themselves that maybe these two violated in this kind of decay processes. However, uh, later in 1930, Wolfgang Pauli, the, uh, a famous particle physicist, came with an idea called neutrino hypothesis. And what he told is that it is possible that they, there are not uh, this uh, beta decay is not a two body process, two body decay process, rather it is a three body decay process. So here I like to mention here that uh, Olbon uh, Pauli is not the first one to name the name uh, this particle neutrino. It is, he thought it is a neutron. So after Fermi gave a successful consistent beta decay th theory of beta decay at 1932, later Fermi gave the name neutrino and once we know that fundamental uh, this uh, fundamental beta decay theory where a neutron goes to proton and electron and then the, for uh, conservation of uh, these charges it has to be anti neutrino so and these are these anti, anti neutrino or neutrino is a very weakly interacting and almost massless and you can see this is a electrically neutral and spin up fermion so this is how that the concept of neutrino comes. Uh, since it is a almost massless uh, during that time, we don't know about masses or uh, it has masses or not. And it is very weakly interacting. So it is very difficult to detect. Uh, so Pauli in 1930 wrote a letter in, uh, to the, uh, uh, where he mentioned that Dear radioactive ladies and gentlemen. So this is his letter. Actually, it was originally not written in English, but it is later converted to English. The main uh, crack of this, uh, you know, letter is that he mentioned the uh, the members of the committee that I have done something very bad 
today by proposing a particle that cannot be detected is something uh, it is something no theoretist uh, theor theorist should do ever do so this is what he wrote that he has proposed a particle which cannot be detected however you know people are very smart and uh, experimentalist took this challenge and first neutrino indeed was discovered by uh, Rains and Counts in 1956. What they did is that uh, they rather tried a uh, inverse beta decay process where electron antineutrino collides with proton and give, gives rise to neutron and positron. These positrons immediately annihilate with il nearby electron and give two photon, and then neutron got absorbed by cadmium, also eject photon, and this gamma photon, uh, gamma or photon are detected, which confirms that there are indeed uh, neutrinos or antineutrinos. So you can see that the, it is so challenging. Uh, things are challenging, that's why it is very interesting. And first neutrino was discovered 26 years after it was first proposed. And then these guys wrote a telegram to Pauli that we are, we are happy to inform you that we have definitely detected a neutrino. So this was the first neutrino detection experiments. Later in 1960s, uh, Ponticarbo suggested that neutrino produce in the pion decay. So earlier one was uh, inverse beta decay process. So here Ponticarbo proposed that neutrino produce in the pion decay may be different than neutrino produce in the beta decay. And that gives an idea to the Lederman, Schwarz and Steinberg. What they did is that they have set up an experiment where uh, they have created um, a kind of, mion uh, type neutrino from the pion decay, and they made a big steel shield where this, when uh, pion passes, it decays to mu plus and uh, neutrino. You can see since uh, mions are massive, so, and uh, they interact very easily. So they are stopped by the steel shield, whereas neutrino are very easily interacting. They can travel much and they goes to this part chamber, chamber and these neutrinos produce their corresponding counterparts, the charged lepton, and who, this charged lepton can be detected, and that's confirmed the detection of second type of neutrino, which is called muon neutrino, and that gives a Nobel Prize to these three gentlemen and at 1988. Later, at the 2000, the donut collaboration, direct observation of new tau collaboration at FNL lab discovered the third type of neutrino, which is named as tau neutrino, and the procedure is same. So, so that's the three types of neutrino we have a, in the standard model, which are measured. And now question comes that uh, one of the important properties of the neutrino is that if you see the standard model charge current interactions, uh, which, which can be written by this kind of terms, and if you draw the Feynman diagrams, so you can see this L alpha minus comes with new alpha. Similarly, it's antiparticle comes with uh, ch corresponding charge antiparticle. So this is an, uh, this phenomenon, from this Feynman diagram, we know that this is a beautiful properties of neutrino, that all the new neutrino comes with their corresponding charge partner. So it is like if an electron kind of neutrino comes at the detector, it will only produce electron. Similarly, from muon neutrino to muon, tau neutrino to tau. So this kind of like from so new mu to e, this kind of interactions are not possible. And thanks that it is not possible. Otherwise, life could have been very much more messy uh, from present situation. And this is actually helps for Lederman, Schwarz, and Steinberg, as I showed in my earlier slide, that detection of sand muon type of neutrino. So uh, we know now we have a three types of neutrino corresponding to three charged partner. However, do we have a, any confirmation from any other experiments that yes, there are three neutrinos? And this comes from this lab collab collaboration, electron, uh, electron collider experiments. Uh, so what this uh, collaboration did is that they tried to mo measure the, uh, the hadron production from the Z boson, resonance, uh, Z boson resonance. So Z boson is a, uh, this mediator particle uh, which can neutral mediator particle which can decay to all the standard model particles. Maybe it's uh, all 
all quarks pairs except top quark because top quark is massive than Z boson. So it cannot decay to the top quark, but the all remaining five quark anti quark pairs, lepton uh, pairs, lepton anti lepton pairs, and neutrino. So now the total decay width of Z boson should be the sum of all these possible uh, width of the decay particles, the fermions. And here uh, we know all those. Uh, you know, decay width. Uh, uh, but if we want to calculate the how many neutrinos, so you can multiply this by number of neutrinos here. And from the remaining numbers, you can find the what is the value of uh, the number of neutrinos and which can turn out to be 2.99, so which is almost three. And this is verified experimentally is that, so this, these dotets are the, uh, are the, uh, the observed data and these are the fit. So you can see the observed data fits with the, with the three neutrino paradigm very, very consistently rather than the remaining others. So that proves that there are three neutrinos in the standard model. So uh, now uh, there are three neutrinos, but from where this neutrino comes? That is another interesting question. And we know uh, now that neutrino comes from various sources, uh, starting from uh, extragalactic objects like here where neutrinos carry a huge amount of energy. Uh, and uh, then we have a galactic uh, neutrinos, neutrinos produce at accelerator, neutrinos produce solar, uh, solar supernovae, and then we have a neutrinos produce at Big Bang. So very light, uh, the energy of neutrinos from milli electron volt to 10 to the power 16 electron volt. Things here to notice is that in this picture, it tells that we have a neutrino, uh, two kind of sources. One is natural sources of neutrinos, and another is a man-made sources of neutrinos or artificial. So here you can see that in the mid uh, energy region, we have a uh, called something called accelerator. So which is a man-made so, uh, sources of neutrino where uh, people create neutrinos by themselves as well as we have a reactor. So these are the only two uh, you know, sources of neutrinos which are artificial sources of neutrinos. Rests are uh, all you know natural sources of neutrinos. So you can see natural sources of neutrinos are um, it can carry a huge amount of energy, which it is at that time being it is very uh, impossible task for the human to create such a high energetic neutrino. So uh, similarly, this uh, huge uh, ranges of uh, energies of neutrinos comes with a different flux, like cause uh, so, so uh, less energetic neutrinos are having a huge uh, high fluxes. On the other hand, uh, uh, cosmogenic neutrinos with a very high energetic neutrinos has a very less fluxes. And uh, the, uh, we have a, uh, these uh, uh, um, reactor neutrinos are here, which are the man-made sources. So you can see that this is the actually flux pattern of neutrinos comes with various energy. So uh, having uh, given a brief overview of history of neutrinos, now, uh, let's go to our main purpose, which is uh, neutrino oscillation. So the idea of neutrino oscillations uh, again uh, came uh, late 1960s, which is given by Bruno Ponticorbo. And he suggested that the idea of neutrino masses and mixing oscillation from the analogy of K neutral boson, uh, K zero meson uh, oscillation. So during that time, people uh, knows that K0, K0 bar can oscillate among themselves. So Ponticarbo suggested, is, is that possible to uh, borrow that idea in the neutrino physics? Remember, around that time, only one kind of neutrino was known, or electron, uh, electron neutrino. So uh, he thought first, is it, it is the oscillation between neutrino and antineutrino among themselves. Later, uh, around 1962, we know that uh, muon-type uh, muon neutrino was discovered, and these three gentlemen came with a flavor transition like uh, Maki, Nakagawa, and Sakata. They gave a, uh, proposed the flavor transitions uh, uh, from the idea of Bruno Ponticarbo. So this is how formally known as neutrino oscillations, which is the transition from one particular flavor to another flavor when a neutrino uh, travel certain distance, suppose at time t equal to zero, we have an electron type neutrino, and later at certain time t equal to t uh, with a distance l, 
uh, if you detect the uh, neutrino, then you, you may find that they are either electron neutrino remains at the same at their origin or muon and tau. So it can you can see from one flavor they can be the uh, uh, they convert to other flavors. So this is what known as neutrino oscillation. Uh, and that is that changes their types. So let's try to understand these concepts little uh, details in the theoretical form, uh, formulations. Uh, so uh, first I'd like to talk about uh, considering two flavors. Suppose, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have three kinds of neutrinos, but let's take the simple scenario. So we have a uh, say electron kind of neutrino and muon kind of neutrino. Uh, so uh, mathematically, mathematically neutrino oscillation means that they are flavor against it, electron and, uh, neutrino and muon neutrino are related with their mass against it. So mass against it we named by new one and new two with an unitary matrix. So they are not directly related, but rather they are related with an unitary matrix where theta is a mixing angle. So this is how the two bases, which is a simple mathematics we everyone uh, here knows. So that is how they are related. Now, uh, given the mass against it, you know the mass against it, the against it of the Hamiltonian. So you can write the, the given new k, k is one and two. So h new k is equal to e k new k. So e k is the energy for uh, new one and new two. So you know the energy eigenvalues you can find here, e k is this. And from this, um, difference of energy is given by this. Now, you can write down the, uh, for a given eigenstate, you can always write down the Schrodinger equation, which we know very well, time dependent Schrodinger equation. And uh, from this Schrodinger equation, if you solve, then you can find the plane of solutions for this equation is given by nu k at certain time t, which is equal to exponential of i e k t times nu k. So this is the plane of solution for the Schrodinger equations. And now this time evolutions for of this uh, 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 of this uh, mass eigenstates after certain times in the flavor eigenstates. It can be converted. So here, this new alpha is the flavored one. So of course, you can convert mass against the flavor against it with the, the rotation matrix I mentioned earlier here. So one can write this in this form. And if we expand these uh, equations where U is the unitary matrix, so suppose we consider electron kind of neutrino at certain time t. So if you can uh, you know, expand this, then you can write in A plus B form where this new one zero and new two zero are the mass against it at time t equal to zero. Now, you know uh, from this picture, what is new one and new two? So you can re reverse this equation, take new one and new two here and new e, new mu here. And then you can write these equations where your new e at time will be something times new e at time zero and new mu at time zero. So you find an equation. Now for a given eigenstates, you can always find an amplitude, which is an inner product of the eigenstates and amplitude mod square will give you probability. So this is a simple steps. Uh, I uh, ask students, you can verify this. And if you do that, then you can find the probability. The amplitude square is called probability. We know that very well. So this is, will give us how electron neutrino travels to electron neutrino at a certain distance after a certain time, which is given by one minus sine square two theta sine square delta m square L by four e. So this delta m square is the mass difference of two neutrinos, mass square differences of two neutrinos. So uh, similarly, if uh, it is a two, two flavor oscillation I was talking about. So uh, here we have two flavors. So if you know, probability should be conserved. So if you know P nu e to nu e, one minus p nu e to nu e should give you p nu e to nu mu. And that is simply from here, you can see it is sine squared, two theta sine squared, some terms inside these, uh, you know, arguments. Now, uh, here is a small homework for the students. You can convince yourself that, as I was mentioning in, the, in our formalism, we take C and H cross are one or our mass and energy has the same unit. So if you, since you know these arguments should be mass uh, unitless, it should be a number just. So if you put proper unit here, you will find you get a 1.27, this number. So if you are really interested on neutrino physics, maybe you can convince yourself from here how you get it 1.27, okay? 
So now let's move. So this uh, formula event can be written in this nice form, which is uh, known to everyone in the uh, way waves and acoustic, you have studied that how the wave function look like. So this is given by sine square two theta sine square pi L by lambda, where lambda is your oscillation wavelength and L is the source to detect our distance. Now, some of the salient future features of this uh, equation you can see for oscillation, from uh, from mu e to new mu conversion, you can see your theta cannot be zero. So there should be a finite mixing angle. So on the other hand, your delta m square cannot be zero. That means your masses for two neutrinos cannot be same. Rather, the masses for two ma neutrino mass against it cannot be same. If they are same, then your delta m square is zero. If delta m square is zero, that means m1 equal to m2, then you don't get uh, this terms zero. So these are the first requirement for neutrino oscillation. Now, if you if you uh, draw, um, if you draw this, then you can see that it look like something like this kind of curve. So here, that amplitude is given uh, the uh, sine square two theta gives the the height of this probability, and this gives your oscillation oscillation length. Now, if we uh, form this four uh, the oscillation wavelength, which is four pi e by delta m square, if you uh, consider E is in MEB and uh, the delta M square is in electron volt square. So you can find that it is 2.5 meters, the oscillation length. So now three uh, important things we can look here are that uh, the possibilities, you know, this is a simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, physics or mathematics, you can say that if your lambda is very large, that means oscillation wavelength is large, larger, larger, larger than your uh, the source to detect resistance, then you know this this uh, theta goes to zero, uh, almost zero. So this part is negligible. So you won't have a you know oscillation here in this scenario. Similarly, if your lambda is uh, uh, smaller smaller than L, that means this ratio is a uh, very large. So you know if it is very large, then sine square will average out and it, it will give in half. So this also doesn't lead you a good you know oscillation scenario. On the other hand, if lambda is equal to twice L, though you can see this is pi by two, and you know sine theta is maximal when it is theta is pi by two. So this is the correct, uh, you know, scenario to get see a perfect, you know, uh, uh, is there a uh, finite pro probability or not to neutrino um, for the neutrinos. So delta uh, lambda equal to twice L gives you this fraction as one, which tells you delta m square equivalent to E by L. So now uh, from this, you can set up actually, depending on your energy and length, you can set up various experiments, which can, uh, where this uh, fraction is maximal and you can see the uh, oscillation of neutrinos from one flavor to another. And indeed, depending on L and E, there are number of experiments happening in the uh, at time being or also proposed in the future. So some of them are right reactor short baseline where your L is around 10 meters and energy in MEB. So you can calculate from the first formula, it is around 0.1 electron volt. So similarly, you have accelerator short baseline, uh, reactor long baseline, accelerator long baseline, atmospheric uh, neutron experiments, reactor very long baseline, accelerator very long baseline, solar neutrino. So you can see as your distance increases, you need to increase E also. Uh, uh, to get a correct, you know, that sine square theta is maximal. And you can see that these are responsible for the different mass square differences. So uh, now I'd like to tell here interesting facts is as I are showing that neutrinos mass is around 0.1 electron volt or so. Well, can we understand it in our day-to-day -day life of course, uh, what we know that everyone one of us we know from our school days, mass of electron is around this uh, 10 to minus 31 kg, which is around 0.5 uh, MeV. So uh, you know that uh, neutrino mass is around 0 0.01 electron volt. So you can see it is on, uh, this is 0.5 MeV and it is electron volt. So it is neutrino mass is around 10 to minus eight times, 10 to minus eight times smaller than electron mass of electron. So it is how small, that's why it is very challenging. And another important, interesting thing I like to say for the students is that, you know, so we have a hundreds billions of neutrinos comes from uh, one of the natural sources of neutrinos is sun, and they 
process us uh, from our body, like every square centimeter of our body per second, like 100 billions of neutrino process through. So when you are eating, now you are like listening to these lectures, when you are taking bath every time, so many neutrinos passes through our body, but we never feel it. So you can uh, imagine then how difficult task to detect these neutrinos because they interact so weakly. So uh, having telling uh, having said these uh, interesting facts, now uh, let's go for uh, more practical scenario, which is uh, we know the Earth has a matter. So when neutrino passes through Earth, kind of matter, then what it happens? So Wolfenstein uh, during 1978 uh, first uh, gave gave an idea that neutrino, uh, you know, passing through matter. Uh, can drastically impact the neutrino oscillations because of the coherent elastic scattering of neutrino through matter. Later, uh, Mickey Webb and Smirnoff also talked about the neutrino flavor, uh, resonant neutrino flavor transitions. Uh, so these are the uh, some ideas which guide people to talk about neutrino neutrino oscillation through matter. So um, uh, first, let's try to look how it interacts through matter. So we know that. From here, charge current and neutron current inter interactions in the standard model. Uh, some noise is coming. It seems an airplane. Ah, okay, okay. So you can listen now, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you see, uh, in the uh, we know as I told earlier that we have electron, muon, and tau three kind of neutrinos. Where this electron kind of neutrinos because in the, our standard metal constant of electron, proton, and neutron. Um, and matter uh, and proton and neutron consist of quarks. So this electron kind of neutrino can undergo charge current uh, interactions. So this is how this charge current Feynman diagram look like. On the other hand, electron muon and tau, since normal matter are no, uh, doesn't have a muon and tau. So that's why that elect uh, muon and tau only undergo neutral current. Electron can go both. Uh, charge and neutral kind of interaction. So this is how they interact or matter. Now, if you know the interaction, uh, you know, the diagram from here, you can write down the Hamiltonian, effective charge current and Hamiltonian. First, I try to write for this one, which we call charge current effective Hamiltonian. So you can see from these vertices, it comes like nu bar gamma mu one minus gamma phi B. This is field, simple field theory. You know how to write this. Uh, here is the catch. So you can see it is nu bar E and E bar nu. Now, uh, again, I tell to students, you can convince yourself uh, there is something called Fierce transformation. If you do, then you can make this E bar nu, E bar to nu, nu bar nu and E bar E. So earlier it was nu bar E to E bar nu and you can make it, which is, uh, this is necessary for us. Why it is necessary, I, I will be, it will be clear in the, uh, in these next slides. So uh, you make it nu bar nu and E bar E. Now the interaction potential, for, um, we are interested to matter potential. So interaction potential is the average of this effective Hamiltonian. So if you uh, take average of this, so you can see the first part is this and second part is this. Now. Let's try to understand the electron parts. So in the non-relativistic limit, the gamma zero is the zeroth part of these gamma matrices. So I will be talking about these gamma matrices and others in the next lecture very details. But for timing, uh, you see this gamma, E bar gamma zero E is the electron number density. On the other hand, E bar gamma mu gamma five is actually gives spin and E bar gamma I E is the actually velocity. Now we consider a framework in the rest frame of unpolarized electron. If you consider, then you can see these two part of electron part doesn't contribute. Only survival part is this. And that if you plug here, then you can, uh, uh, this will look like root two GF any times, uh, something like neutral current. So this is the, this coefficient of this current is the actually potential. And uh, this is something look like root two GF any for neutrino. Similarly, for anti-neutrino, you know that for there is a commutation anti commutation relation between neutrino and anti-neutrino. So you get end up with a minus sign for the anti-neutrino. So this is the potential charge current potential. Similarly, we can calculate the neutral current potential and effective Hamiltonian for neutron current potential look something like this. So here again, I wrote this after Fias transformation. So we have a, for the neutral current, we have a electron, uh, this F stands for electron, muon, uh, proton and neutron. 
So we know these are the coupling constants, uh, vector-like and axial vector-like. So you know, uh, from the standard model, we know very well the GB for electron is this, uh, for proton and neutron. Now, if you can see, uh, the total neutral current potential should be sum of neutron, proton, and electron. But from here, you can see electron and proton has, a, sorry, opposite side si uh, signs, so they cancel out, and only survival part coming from the neutron. So. So this is the part which survives here. And then we, our total potential is the sum of charge current plus neutral current. So which is root to GF any, uh, as I showed in the earlier, and the, uh, this is the coming from the neutral current. Here, this a very important message for the students is that this neutral current is in, uh, it is irrelevant for the neutrino oscillation. It comes as a phase in the Hamiltonian. And you know, when uh, something come in a phase, then when you, calculate it in probability, then uh, the probability is the amplitude square. So this phase get canceled. So this part doesn't contribute in the neutrino oscillation, only the char charge current potential is the important one. So now given the potential, we can write down the Schrodinger equation. So you know Schrodinger equation, this is like time dependent Schrodinger equation I write here. This is our Hamiltonian. And now your Hamiltonian is uh, A0 plus HI. A0 is the vacuum which I discussed earlier. And this is the part comes from matter interaction. And this A0 from the uh, this uh, vacuum part can be written in this form. And if you add H interaction, which earlier I showed it is root two uh, GFNE, uh, you can write the total Hamiltonian something like this, where this A is the one for, uh, where this potential arises. So this is the form, actually, this is a comfortable form. So we write this hem total Hamiltonian in terms of A. Now, you know the Hamiltonian and it is a simple uh, two cross two matrix. So in the, from the uh, mathematics, you know uh, how to solve this matrix. If you solve this matrix, then you get the eigenvalue, which is E1 and E2 and it's eigenvector. So these are the things you have to find. So here we find here E1 and E2 eigenvalues and this difference of E1 and E2 gives your mass square differences from this formula. And you can see this is the M stands for matter. So matter mass square differences, how related with the, uh, you know, it's uh, the matter potential here. And then for the two cross two matrix, you can always find the uh, mixing angle in the matter, which can be uh, expressed in terms of mixing angle in vacuum. So this is something like here. So uh, from here, you can see this is a ratio something like A divided by C minus D form. And from the mathematics, you can know easily that uh, from uh, by looking, there could be a possible of, of resonance. So uh, when resonance is possible, if these two are all equal, right? So this is a uh, resonance uh, talked um, by first Mickey F. Smirnov and Lundfenstein, or famously it is known as MSW resonance. Now you can see for this resonance, there are a lot of conditions. So A is the potential, as I mentioned earlier, and this potential is, I, as I told, it is positive for electron and uh, uh, particles and uh, negative for antiparticle, okay? So if A is positive, so you can see this part should be also be positive to have a cancellation among their, them, right? So this, this uh, part is only positive if delta M square is greater than zero and, and theta is less than 45. See, cos theta, uh, theta is less than four, uh, 45. This cos of two theta, I need a positive. So this is only possible of this. Either if both of them are positive or if both of them are negative, then also the negative negative give positive, then we have a, to tell uh, possibility of uh, resonance. Similarly, for anti neutrino also you can find this, uh, this condition. So this is the uh, called famous, uh, you know, MSW resonance condition. So now uh, let's make it uh, make life a little more complicated. As I mentioned, that we have a three types of neutrino. So let's talk about three uh, flavors neutrino here. So uh, in the three flavor, you can easily um, you can easily write down uh, the Hamiltonian of your two flavor in the most general. So this is the, I wrote one by two IC U M square U dagger. 
plus a, where this m square is now, it is an three cross three diagonal matrices. U is a mixing matrix, which is also a three cross three. And a is the, the diagonal part uh, that uh, consists of this potential. Uh, now, this equation you can simplify a little more uh, by introducing a term alpha, which is the ratio between these two mass square differences. So see, these are, I do, did not wrote here square. These are actually mass square differences. And uh, just for simplicity, we actually uh, just don't write square here, but these are square. So you, if you introduce alpha, then you uh, can uh, write down this Hamiltonian in the flavor basis, something like this. Now, given the Hamiltonian, as I mentioned earlier, your next uh, uh, task to find the neutrino oscillation probability is to, you have to diagonalize it and find it eigenstates and eigenvalue. Once you find eigenstates and eigenvalue, you are done. But in the three flavor scenario, this is not that easy. And it is uh, almost uh, uh, non very, um, it is very much non-trivial non to find exact eigenvalue and eigenstate of this Hamiltonian. So there are various approximations to solve these equations. So how to find neutrino oscillation probability from this Hamiltonian, here I give some steps. So probability is nothing but the mass square difference, uh, sorry, mod square of these uh, evolution matrix. The, the evolution matrix we define here by S, which is tells you how your uh, neutrino with a, a time t equal to zero related with neutrino at time certain time t equal to t. So this is how they evolve. This S is an actually, it is an uh, eigenstates for the Schrodinger uh, equations. So now, given this eigenstate, how to find, uh, sorry, given this S evolution matrix, how you will find this S is to, you have to first diagonalize this, your Hamiltonian with some U prime matrix, which is U prime H dagger, U prime dagger. And where H prime is the diagonal uh, uh, three cross three matrix with eigenvalues E1, E2, and E3. Sorry, there is some question. Okay, but uh, but the basis of masses against this would not be continuous. I think we propose it to be discrete while. Sorry, uh, these questions uh, is not clear to me. Maybe we can talk after the lecture and uh, we can discuss about it. Let's wait for some time. Thanks. Okay, so. Uh, so this S is something look like, uh, this evolution matrix look like this. It's related with this U prime and the rotation matrix with this energy eigenvalue. Uh, so you have to find this S. Once you find S, then as I mentioned earlier, mod S square will give you a probability. So as I mentioned, uh, this is not so easy task. There are a few approximations which are very, you know, uh, um, well appreciated. Uh, one is called, first one is called uh, among um, some of these approximation is called one mass scale dominance, where this alpha tends to zero. Uh, alpha tends to zero means it is this ratio is alpha. I will be to, uh, talking till now I did not mention that this delta to one from the experimental uh, uh, measurement, we know it is around 10 to the power minus five and delta three one is 10 to the power minus three. So this ratio could be small. So you can consider a scenario where this alpha tends, can be zero. Similarly, there are other approximation like uh, you consider alpha and S13. S13 is actually sine theta one three. Theta one three is a mixing parameter. These are the parameters you can consider them up, uh, keep them up to second order or first order in alpha or exact dependence on S13. So these are the few approximations are considered to solve this Hamiltonian. So I'll be giving a brief overview of first two. Yeah, so first talk about this within the one mass scale dominance approximation. So uh, if this, uh, this method is fairly easy here because if your alpha tends to zero, your uh, things get, you know, uh, these terms get zero. So things becomes uh, very simple and you can solve and you can find the uh, P E to mu. So remember here, this notation E to mu, it is not electron and muon, it is electron neutrino to muon neutrino. So for simplicity, we write, write, write like this. And this is related with that, like something, this equation. So here, theta one, three M, this M uh, super, this M symbols here are the for matter. So this is something like 
uh, can be expressed like this and the mixing angle can be expressed like this. So you can see from this expression again, that there is a possible resonance condition from the, for the one three sector. And uh, there, uh, this uh, approximation can be well explained uh, the theory which has a resonance. And famously, the, this has been explored in this paper. Uh, interested candidates can look this paper and try to understand it. So uh, some validity condition from here, you can see that uh, your delta to one L by E has to be less less than one. That means L by E should be less less than 10 to the power four kilometer per GB. This is the validity condition. So you have to set up an experiment where this condition uh, are satisfied to get this kind of, uh, resonances or uh, to this OMSD approximation. Similarly, if this condition is invalid, if you consider this kind of scenario. So this is the condition for the OMSD approximation. Now, uh, I talked about the second approximation, which is second order in alpha and S13. And this is the one which is very famous for the long baseline neutrino oscillations or rather you know, where people talk about, and this is very consistent with our theoretical understanding. So what people does in the, under this framework, you uh, write down Hamiltonian in this form where this M is uh, um, uh, explained by this O1 to 1, 3 and O1 to transpose. These are the, your rotation matrices in the 1, 2 sector, 1, 3 sector. And this is O2, 3, 2, 3 rotation matrices. Now, the next step is you expand this M in terms of, your M0, M1, and M2. The M0, uh, the, here this M0 is the term where uh, they are, uh, the, which is independent of alpha and S13. So the, here I wrote here. So you, uh, 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 we try to solve it perturbatively. So you write down M0, which is independent of alpha and S13. Then you have a M1 and M2, which are contain first and second order in alpha and S13. So here, this is first order in alpha and S13. And here it is second order in alpha and S13. Now you have a three masses. And uh, um, remember, you have to find eigenvalue and eigenstates. That's it. So if, if you have a three masses, you can find the eigenvectors for each of these matrices, which is VI0 for 0 to 1 and first order, second order. Similarly, you find eigenvalue. So these are the formulas for the eigenvalue. For the 0 to 1, it is diagonal. So eigenvalue are very trivial. For You have to find for first order and second order. So once you know your eigenvector, uh, uh, then you have to write down your unitary matrix. So these are your eigenvectors. And then you can write your unitary matrix, which is O23, U delta, and W. This W is the part which is the uh, uh, which contains the these eigenvectors coming from this B1, B2, and B3. So remember, this is your total uh, unitary matrix. Now you know unitary matrix, you know eigenvalue, and you can construct the S matrix. And from the S matrix squared, you can find the probability. So I again I here ask students to look back this paper. Uh, if you are really doing neutrino oscillation or you are interested, at least in your life, you should do it once to convince yourself. This is a lengthy, not difficult, but it is a lengthy uh, uh, calculation to convince yourself. And you can see this paper and they did not give uh, uh, skip some steps. You can do the steps and convince yourself. And uh, here I write the most, you know, uh, necessary, pro you can find all oscillation probability for all channels, but I mentioned just yeah, the most necessary one for us, is, which is muon to electron, and which explained by this. This is a very nice expression, and which is theoretically very consistent for the long baseline oscillation, which we call as a Paris channel. So from muon to electron, so from one flavor to another flavor in neutrino community, they mention is appearance channel. Similarly, we have a disappearance channel where if they, the flavor of neutrinos remain same, so muon to muon, which is called disappearance channel and which uh, look like something very simple form compared to appearance channel. Sim this is for neutrino. Similarly, you can always find the oscillation probability for anti-neutrino by simply reversing the sign of delta and sign of potential. So uh, this is the oscillation formula I mentioned earlier. Uh, the mixing matrix you actually contains the mixing parameters. So now let's give a, how many parameters here. 
so the U matrix, as, as, I'm, as you can see here, this actually at the end of the day can be expressed with the three rotation uh, angles uh, and one uh, CP phases. So we, the rotation angle, as I mentioned earlier, this is actually here, like O23, O12, and O13. These are the three uh, orthogonal matrices, like O23. This is has a phase, so this is actually inventory, and this is an O12. So uh, later also we know in the neutrino community that this theta two three is the parameter which is measured by this kind of experiment. That's why it is mentioned here. And these are various type of experiments which are which actually are sensitive to these uh, angles. So now we know that we have a in the three flavor neutrino oscillation scenario we have a six uh, parameters. These are uh, we have a six parameters means we have a three masses. Neutrino oscillation experiments, as I showed earlier, that they are dependence, neutrino oscillation prob probability are dependence on mass square differences. So you have a three masses. So you can have a three, uh, two independent mass square differences. So these are, these are called atmospheric mass square differences, delta M31 square, or solar mass square difference, delta M21 square. Uh, these are the two mass square differences. Similarly, we have a three mixing angle, atmospheric, solar, and reactor, and we have a CP phase, which is delta. So these are the parameters which need to be measured in the, uh, in the uh, by neutrino oscillation experiments. So now there are, uh, uh, at the current juncture, there are number of experiments which are running or proposed for the future. So this is a very nice cartoon, which uh, tells here that uh, uh, this here is the oscillation distance. You can see from uh, order one meter to 10 to the four kilometer, which is a huge uh, source to detector distance experiments with a very, uh, very uh, huge range of energy. So you can see this diagonal line actually are for same mass square differences. So here, the low energy neutrino oscillation experiments are mostly the reactor one with a various be, be, uh, baseline, baseline, so to distance, distance. If we go up, so you can see these are some of these, LSND is the another one, uh, which is around uh, 30 meters, uh, which I'll be talking in the, uh, for the our fifth lecture for the sterile neutrino, which actually sensitive for this kind of um, neutrinos. Then we have a here mini boon, uh, micro boon. Then we have a long baseline R here, like Minos, Nova, T2K, Dune. And then we have, you know, neutrino factories are here. So these are the, uh, the this Dune, uh, these are the future neutrino experiments, hypercomic, and they are proposed future stick neutrino experiments. So this, this gives us, uh, you know, flavors of various kinds of neutrinos. Uh, at the at the current juncture, so so um, now um, from these various experiments, actually at for the timing we have a very good understanding of neutrino oscillation parameters. As I mentioned, we have a three mass square differences and two uh, sorry two mass square differences, three mixing and a CP phase. So the mass square differences delta m two one is around seven point five five. 10 to cross 10 to the minus 5 electron volt square. Similarly, we know delta M31 is around 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So it is, remember these uh, fractions here. This is very important. So delta M21 square is uh, 100 times smaller than delta M31 square. We have a theta 1, 2 is here, which is around you know 32 degree. And we have a theta 2, 3, which is around, uh, which varies, uh, best fit is around 47 degree. Uh, we have a theta one three, which is the smallest among all three mixing angles, which is around 8.5 degree. And we have a delta. Uh, delta is very loose, but we don't have a much of uh, a, a time being. It is almost uh, allowed in the zero to 360, almost at the three sigma. And it best fit is around 230 or um, just about 200. Um, so uh, these are the parameters, but uh, we have a, actually, uh, there are lots, th lots of things to understand from here is that uh, this range of theta two, three is very low. Till now it is 10 degree at the three sigma uh, uh, are allowed. So the, depending on it is less than uh, 45 or greater than 45, which we call is lower octant or higher octant, uh, which is still unknown. Similarly, we don't know the hierarchy of delta M331. And of course, uh, as like quark sector, do we have a CP violation in the electronic sector also, though we have a hints for this. 
So this, uh, um, these are the few unknowns, which I'll be talking in the next slide very uh, in details. But before that, I like to mention here that, that this, uh, we now we know that neutrinos certainly have a non-zero mass, uh, mass square differences. That means neutrinos are uh, massive, though very tiny. And that uh, gives uh, the latest Nobel Prize in the neutrino physics to these two gentlemen. So, uh, Takaki Kajita of uh, Super Kogande Group of uh, Japan, as well as Arthur B. McDonald of SNO of Canada. They got the, the most recent Nobel Prize in Neutrino, which is at 2015. So, uh, as I was mentioning um, unknowns here, I'd like to uh, give little details of these unknowns is that uh, we, uh, we have a delta M31 square, but delta M31 square can be M3 square minus M1 square or M1 square minus M3 square. So that means we don't know yet, M1 is the lightest one uh, or M3 is the lightest one. If M1 is the lightest, then you can uh, actually uh, 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 make a picture like M1 is the smallest one, then M2 and M3. So you can see this, M, uh, if you put it like this, then delta M21 square is actually your solar mass square difference and delta M31 is atmospheric. So this is something we call normal hierarchy. So we write it like this. Similarly, um, it can be inverted hierarchy also. Like if your M3 is the uh, smallest one, then also it can explain your solar mass square differences and atmospheric mass square differences. But it is not possible that neutrinos um, should follow bo bo both the pattern. In nature, they should follow only one pattern. So this is an ambiguity we don't know. Similarly, we don't know that uh, what is the octant, octant of this, like as I mentioned earlier, like theta two, theta two three, for time being, it is 40 degree to uh, 52 degrees allowed. The experiments which are sensitive, actually they are sensitive to sine square two theta two three. And uh, as you know, two theta two three means theta two three uh, less than 45 and greater than 45 gives you same answer. So we don't know it is lower octane or higher octane. This is another ambiguity, which we need to answer uh, or address. So uh, uh, similarly, the Delta CP, as I was mentioning that, do we have a CP violation in this, uh, you know, a neutrino sector or electronic sector, uh, similar to quark sector or not? So these are the few fundamental issues to address. However, the determination of these mix, uh, unknowns are not that easy because of the presence of something called parameter degeneracy. Uh, so uh, what is the parameter degeneracy? Parameter degeneracy is that, uh, as we know, uh, the degeneracy means two different set of parameters give you same uh, uh, you know, result. So here, like I wrote here, P alpha beta of X equal to P alpha beta of Y. That means X is a set of oscillation parameters. So you can see, I, as I mentioned here, that, uh, so two different theta, theta and delta C be two different parameters and theta prime and delta prime and uh, small delta prime and capital delta prime. These are the two set of parameters can give rise to your same probability. So this is the degeneracy. In nature, uh, it should not be possible. Uh, neutrino should, should have only one set of parameters. Quite uh, the, there, is, there, can, there is a possibility to have a, another clone solution which gives you equal probability. So this is a, something called degeneracy. And uh, this confuses us to resolve those unknown parameters. So uh, let's try to understand this para parameter degeneracy, how they arrive in the oscillation probability. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, DC Perez channel, which is depends on sine square two theta two three as well as sine square delta. So you can see here, the from here, then uh, because it is a square, so you can see P mu, mu of delta is equal to, if you reverse its signs, uh, sign, they are same. So this is called intrinsic hierarchy degeneracy. Similarly, from here, you can see theta two three and that two, three minus pi by two is called intrinsic octane degeneracy because they gives you same results. So this disappearance channel has a uh, intrinsic hierarchy and octane degeneracy. Similarly, if you look appearance channel, which can be expressed in this form, and it has a delta CP dependence, uh, mass square mass dependence, as well as it has a theta two, three dependence. So you can see here are no terms related to sine square two theta or sine square delta. So this equation doesn't have an intrinsic degeneracy, but it suffers something called uh, gen uh, generalized degeneracy, like two parameter degeneracy. So which are called delta delta CP, which is uh, famously studied in this paper. Similarly, theta one three delta CP is studied here. And uh, uh, beginning of this uh, 21st century, around 2000, 2001 to uh, 
the very famous something called eightfold degeneracy was explored uh, by lots of people in this sector. So eightfold degeneracy means there are uh, like uh, this theta one three delta uh, theta one three delta CP degeneracy. This uh, interesting delta and interesting theta two three. These together form eight kind of degeneracies. So uh, um, there is a possibility that out of eight, only one is true, but you have a seven clone solution. So this is called eightfold degeneracy. So this was uh, uh, was popular during uh, beginning of this uh, 21st century. However, determinants of, of theta one three. Act, uh, now we know um, after uh, Diabe data that theta one three is known now very well, and that actually uh, resolves this eightfold degeneracy, but till we have a parameter degeneracy, which we try to look, which is, is called generalized hierarchy octane delta CP degeneracy. Now you see here, theta one three is not present, but because of the presence of theta two three delta and delta CP long baseline experiments can suffer this kind of degeneracy. Now you can see there are three parameters so you, if you permuton compute, uh, comp uh, you can find that there are uh, two, uh, there are eight possible solutions. So if you consider here, I wrote if you believe your delta CP is correct or right, then you can see that depending your hierarchy is uh, there here, R means right and H is hierarchy, and O means octant and W means wrong. So if you permuton compute, you can find that there are total. Uh, uh, four solution with the right delta CP and four solution with the wrong delta CP. Out of these eight, there should only one solution so nature should uh, prefer. However, we have a seven clone solution. So this is the difficulties which oscillation experiment faces. So I try to show here more accurately what we have done for NOVA. So in the NOVA, uh, depending your hierarchy is normal hierarchy or your octant is LO means lower octant and HO means higher octant, you can have a four band of uh, probability you can plot here along the delta CP. And you can see, as I mentioned, two different set of solutions giving same probability means degeneracy. So here you can see the green band and blue band co uh, co coincides at this point. So this is we at the same delta CP around 90. So this is we call right delta CP solution. So this is a degenerate solution. Similarly, uh, wrong delta CP means two different delta CP. Like if you consider the point here around delta CP 150 and this along this blue line, if you point here, which is around minus 100, so these you can see giving same probability with two different uh, parameter uh, of value of delta CP. So this is called wrong delta CP solution. So these are the degenerate solutions. So in the this is in the probability. However, if you plot them in the delta CP versus theta two three plane, as I mentioned earlier, theta two three uh, for time being it is a huge more than ten degree uh, range is allowed. So this is a little old study. So uh, we have plotted it from thirty five degree to fifty five degree. Suppose this is the point, as I mark here, this is around 39 and minus 90. So you suppose you believe this is your exact solution, okay? So this is my, I believe this is my exact solution. And now if you say this is your exact solution, this need to be proved by some experiments. So when that uh, NOVA try to measure it, they won't measure, cannot measure, an experiment cannot measure exact point. They will measure with some uncertainty. So your, that's why you get uh, some kind of contours here. However, when they try to measure along with these contours, they also end up with some uh, clone solutions. You can see here one and another one is here. So you can see this clone is with the around same delta CP. So this is a clone with the right delta CP and this is a clone with the wrong delta CP. So that means that your um, number is confused by the other solutions. So this is what is called degeneracy. So you can see the NOVA experiment alone cannot resolve this degeneracy. By here the NOVA six plus zero, what I mean is that NOVA only run for the neutrino channel, not antineutrino. Okay, now uh, we try to address that. Can we solve this degeneracy? To do so, first, what we did here, we did NOVA six plus zero means six years of neutrino run. We now split it. We try to split it. NOVA runs for three years of neutrino and three years of anti neutrino. So, if you do a does so, then you can see by running just simple uh, the anti neutrino run for three years, you can see this the solution uh, presented uh, shown here is actually ruled out by, uh, by this NOVA 3 plus 3, but till the degeneracy allowed region is large. Now what we did with, with NOVA, we tried to 
add t to k, which is another long baseline neutrino oscillation experiments, ongoing experiments. If you add the data from the t to k, then you can see that uh, your parameter range at uh, two sigma, this is the huge range. Actually, it's uh, now at the two sigma, this region 45 degrees ruled out, and you can see it's some true discrete solution. This discrete solution, this solution is again, it is an degenerate solution, and this also can be you know, further constrained by adding an IKEL, which is an atmospheric neutrino experiment. It is at, at India, which is a proposed experiment, and you can almost rule it out. So by adding NOVA, t 2 and IKEL, you can see that this uh, parameters plane can be constrained and uh, things can be understood very more uh, comprehensively. So this is, I showed with the one set of solution, like as I mentioned, uh, consider this, but, but we don't know which is the correct number yet of theta two, three and delta CP. You can consider another number here or any uh, any value inside this uh, allowed parameter space and you can study uh, more comprehensively to see how it look like, okay? So this is how we can rule out the uh, the future experiments or future data can actually solve this DGNRC and we can understand from here, you can see it tells your Octant is lower octant and hierarchy is normal hierarchy. So this is how we can solve the problem of hierarchy and uh, octant in the neutrino sector. Having said that, uh, is that means now that we know all the things about neutrinos, uh, question comes, uh, uh, answer is no. There are many unknowns which we don't know. Among them is one of the unknown questions here is that why neutrino mass is so tiny? So as I mentioned, or you already know that uh, in, the, in the standard model, the top quark mass is around 172 or 73 GeV. Uh, we have a, then we have a electron mass is around 0.5 MeV, okay? Which is around, you can see this is an electron volt, 0.5 MeV is just less than 3 power 6 GeV, right? So you can see these are the, these uh, here, uh, uh, here, this is the energy scale and this is the generation. So we have electron, muon, and tau. Similarly, we have a first fl fl uh, family of quark, second family of quark, and third family of quark. So you can see the other fermions are so massive and neutrinos are from electron ball to milli, uh, milli electron ball point, uh, below point uh, uh, one electron ball. So they are so light. Why they are so light compared to other mm, you know, uh, fermions of the standard model? This is an, uh, uh, this is a question which we need to understand or address. So I will be talking in, in the next lecture, I will be talking more details about this. And another interesting fact here is to see that this is something called flavor desert. So you can see why in this range from electron volt to MeV, there is no particle. So this is an, another interesting uh, things to ask here. Another imp interesting uh, questions of neutrinos is that as I mentioned earlier, they are electrically neutral. So uh, the question comes, if uh, they are electrically neutral, then um, Myrona uh, is a, uh, this famous neutrino physicist around late 1940, she proposed that since they are electrically neutral, can neutrino be its own antiparticle? So we still don't know yet. So if they are own antiparticle, then it is called Myrona neutrino or not, if not, then they are called Dirac. So neutrinos are, either Dirac or Mayana, which is also an interesting question and we don't know. This is also an interesting question and may, uh, I will be talking uh, little details in the next lecture of, about this. If neutrinos are Dirac, then the mass term from the Dirac neutrinos we write something like that. You know, in the field theory that cyber, coefficient of cyber psi gives you the mass. So this is the Dirac and it's actually conserved lepton number. On the other hand, if your neutrino is a Myrona, then you can see this is not bar uh, here, psi bar psi, but it is psi transpose psi. So the, you can clearly see this violate lepton number by two units. So these are the few, uh, some interesting facts. Another interesting facts here that, as I was mentioning, that there are three types of neutrinos in the standard model. Or you can always ask, is there any other new kind of neutrinos? Okay, you can always ask, nobody can stop you. Of course, question, uh, there is no other kind of neutrino in the standard model, but beyond standard model, as I mentioned, that there are various signals which tells us to look for uh, physics beyond the standard model. One of the thing is the, uh, is there new, any other neutrino beyond the standard model? And question, um, answer is yes. Being a theoretician, uh, this is a good and as well as ugly part. You can add as many as neutrinos as you want, depending your model. If your theoretical framework are theoretically consistent, then you can add 
uh, depending on your uh, platform, uh, as many neutrinos as you want. So you can see here I showed some uh, people studied various kind of, uh, neutrinos beyond the standard model. So this is the active neutrinos which, uh, which take part in the, uh, which are the part of the standard model, but we, one can have a sterile electron ball style neutrino. Uh, the detail I will be talking in my fifth lecture, the, which is uh, experiment like LSD, mini bone reactors, various other experiments try to look for this kind of neutrinos. Then you can study KEB sterile neutrinos, which is actually are, uh, the one dark matter and people are exploring this part also. Then we have a TEB kind of Mirana neutrinos, uh, which is uh, the, this, uh, if they are in the TEB, the motivation is you can prove them in the LSE. Then we have a, uh, uh, guard scale like uh, EEB, which is around 10 to about 12 or higher, guard scale neutrinos, which I will be again, uh, which is very important. And uh, in the next lecture, I will be talking about this. So you can see neutrinos energy, depending on your choices and theoretical framework, neutrino, uh, you can consider any kind of sterile neutrino from electron ball to guard scale. Okay. So nobody, uh, this is the good and ugly, but it is the challenging for the experimentalist to prove it, okay? This is the most challenges, but theoretical side, you can always uh, add uh, any day, any time. So uh, finally, I end up with some more questions. Uh, is there any other new physics in the uh, involving neutrinos? Yes, there are many new physics people are exploring, though we have not seen any in the experimental evidences like uh, non-neutrality, non extra dimension, long range forces, um, et cetera. Then uh, we have a, uh, why does the neutrino possess any non-zero neutrino, neutrino magnetic moment? Uh, does the neutrino sector violate Lorentz or CPT are the interesting question. Why there are more matter than antimatter, the, which is called uh, meta, this baryon asymmetry, uh, which can also be addressed by successful leptogenesis. These are the, some interesting questions. So, and et cetera. There are many questions which I cannot be addressed. Some of them I will be addressing in the coming lectures. Uh, finally, I for the students, I like to end with this slide here. So you can see this is a big, beautiful picture, and this is actually a picture of sun. So you have always seen sun uh, from the when you, we measure the light uh, outside, and you know how sun look like. But this is the picture when you capture neutrino, how sun look like through neutrinos. So you can this is the picture. Finally, these are a few wrap up comments uh, for the students and general audience. Like you can take your messages. So the aim was to give in some overview of neutrino physics with some motivations. And the interesting thing to notice is that you see the neutrino mass is so light compared to electron. Okay. Uh, so the, uh, that's why it is very, uh, and it interacts so weakly. So that's why it is very challenging and more challenging made more interesting. And uh, please remember this, like whenever you are eating, sleeping, doing anything that how many neutrinos passing through you that may be motivate you to do this as an interesting piece. Thank you, guys. Thanks for that. Answer. Thank you very much, uh, Newton. I think we we can start with the questions, maybe. Uh, if yeah. you uh, want to raise a question, please, uh, in reactions, you can raise your hand, but we can start with the with the questions in, in the chat, Newton. Yeah. So first question is, uh... mm -hmm. where do we you have the approximate neutrino mass of 0 0.01 electron ball form from. Okay, so yeah, this 0 0.01, when I say it is actually from the uh, solar mass square difference and atmospheric mass square differences, you know, delta m31 square is 10 to the minus, uh, 21 is 10 to the minus five and delta m31 is 10 to the minus three. So if you just take a square root of this, you can find then one of the mass should be of the order of 0 0.01. So this is the simple understanding. Uh, this is by we, setting one of the masses to zero, right? Uh, just to clarify. Yes, yeah, yeah. because yeah, I mean, you setting the, the lightest to, to zero. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, uh, as I mentioned, neutrino oscillation, as you can see from my slides, then neutrino oscillation experiments are not sensitive to absolute mass of neutrino. When you are talking mass is 0 0.01, this is absolute neutrino mass. And we have a absolute mass from other experiments, like uh, we have a bound from cosmology from on the sum of neutrinos, or we have a from uh, M beta, from Katrin gives a bound on M beta. So, but not neutrino oscillation are dependent on mass square differences. Okay. Then there is another question. I don't think so. Okay. This is an explanation, I think. Uh, okay. Who should you explain? 
Why can we propose the flavor states of neutrinos as a state that mixes mass states, or is it just a hypothesis? So this is the essence of neutrino oscillations. You know, if their flavor states are same as mass eigen states, then there is no oscillation. Okay. So this is the and as I showed earlier, that probability depends on sine square two theta and sine square mass differences. So if your theta is zero, that means your flavor eigen states are same as your mass eigen states. So there is no oscillation. Okay. If I recall correctly, mass against mass states. Okay, I think this is the explanation. Is it not it a consequence of the fixed dimension of the Hilbert space? The flavor de defines a three-dimensional uh, HS, and thus any changes of basis should remain maintain its dimension. What that question? Can you? I think I mean the, 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 there were some discussions that uh, some of the questions were already answered mm -hmm. uh, somehow. Um, the next question I think is, uh, have we seen experimental ECP violation in neutrinos? And do we have an experimental value for the phase delta in the um, MS matrix? Yeah, we have a hint from the global, uh, global analysis of neutrino physics. We know that delta CP is now around 200 degree. We have a hint for CP violation, but till experiment should confirm. Experimenters are neither confirming nor ruling out. Definitely it signals to the CP violation in the neutrino sector also, yes. Say, I thought, uh, wrote, I remember parity violation with Woods experiment, not sure if it was also CP, well, it's related. Related, yeah, parity means CP, yeah. Uh, in Junti's book, page 187, the interval of the mixing angles is from zero to pi over two. Why not mm -hmm. theta ij from zero to pi over two? Yeah, it, it, for the C, uh, ultimately it is an unitary mixing matrix. So for the unitary mixing matrix, it can be possible from zero to, you know, pi by two, anything you can take. But for theta two, three specifically in the, uh, uh, so for theta one, three and theta one, two, we know they, uh, you know, there is no degeneracy and their dependency is very clear. Or theta two, three comes from, from two theta two, three. Now, if it is two theta two, three, then you know 40 degree and 50 degree gives same answer, right? Because of the degen uh, dependency of, of theta two, three. So this is the degeneracy in principle, yes. For the unitarity, it is okay. Uh, Volgan said you cannot sterile neutrinos if you like, but an additional neutrino as a lepton doublet partner with a uh, with weak charge requires a full additional fermion generation. So it is not totally arbitrary. Uh, okay, um, but uh, uh, we, it is not, yeah, the, as, as I mentioned, uh, it is not arbitrary in a sense, you have to maintain some theoretical framework, right? But at any energy, when I say arbitrary means any energy scale, you can always, from theoretical side, you can cleverly always manipulate yourself and you can always add it. That is my point. Of course, you have to maintain some criteria, right? That is the point. Yeah. And actually, this is this is also. I mean, the, the number of uh, of light neutrinos. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, interacting with the, through the weak charge uh -huh. um, is is three for masses below m z over two, right? Okay. Yes. And dear Cantara, I mean, why not theta i j from zero to two pi? Well, I think. Uh, why not? Uh, experimentally should find it, right? Experimentalists are finding what they are finding, okay? In principle, from the theoretical side, there is no point, uh, no problem. It can be for the um, unitarity, yes, it is fine. Uh, Wolfgang uh, said the Wu experiment demonstrate P violation and C violation, but by no means CP violation. Uh, th that's true. CP violation in the neutrino sector or the, in the quark sector, right? Who is experiment for parity violation, right? Yes. Anyone who want to raise a question? You can ask also probably in the audio. Yes. Or have a discussion in some of the topics already. For the students. Uh, Christian Calderon is raising his hand. Christian. Yeah, thank you, Eduardo. Uh, I have a, a basic question, but I 
but it's not clear for me. Uh, I, I, I would like to ask uh, why do neutrinos oscillate? I, I mean, what do neutrinos have that the other particles don't? Because we don't see oscillation in quartz sector or in char uh, charged lepton sector. Either. Yeah, I said there is, is there some theoretical explanation or is just a experimental fact? Uh, uh, it is a mostly as you, uh, yeah, the first, this is a very good question. As you, so in principle, from the theoretically, it can oscillate. There is no problem, okay? So uh, a charged lepton can also oscillate. But the problem is here, if you see the mass of the charged lepton is, as I mentioned, uh, even for the electron, it is 10 to about eight times larger than the neutrino. So uh, in the GOT book, uh, one of the chapter, he very nicely mentioned it. You can read it also, that you need a, uh, need an experiment where source and detector should be so large that it cannot, uh, you, you cannot set up a experiments in this whole universe, okay? So it is no way practically impossible to study this kind of oscillations for other charge fermion. But in theoretically, it should it can, should be possible. Okay. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Christian, in quark in the quark sector, there are I mean the the mixing of the quarks give rise to to meson oscillations like. Um, K0, K0 bar. Yes. K0 bar, for instance. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, but, but that is an a, a oscillation in, in mesons, not yeah. in, in quark sector. Yeah, right? yeah but it's due to, to the mixing of the quarks. I mean, there is a, also a, the CKM mixing matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other? Okay, thanks. Dear Gantara, please. Where, where Thank you, you for, uh, for the nice uh, lecture, Dr. Newton. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we know that in the standard model, we differentiate the neutrino based on the helicity, right? Uh, neutrino, yes. ha neutrino has a negative helicity and then anti-neutrino has the positive helicity. But mm -hmm. now the problem is, and um, we know that neutrino has mass, which means that there will be always a Lorentz frame such that we can go to that frame and then uh, flip the helicity of the neutrino, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so in that frames uh, where, for example, suppose we have neutrino uh, and then we have, uh, of course, uh, helicity will be minus, then in that frame, the helicity will be plus. Right, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we know that helicity plus of neutrino, which we call anti-neutrino in the standard model, only mm -hmm. produce a positive charge lepton. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, so it means that by by doing this kind of Lorentz transformation, then mm -hmm. we can convert from particle to antiparticle of the charge lepton. Uh, say, for example, I have a, a neutrino, electron yes. neutrino. Yes. Uh, and then it will produce uh, 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 electron charge electron, yes, electron yes. right? But yes. then I go to the Lorentz frame, it will be a uh, uh, positive Elicity. helicity, which we call anti neutrino, mm -hmm. and then it will produce a, a, a positron. Mm -hmm. So it's something that uh, by doing this kind of Lorentz transformation, we can uh, change the identity of the charge lepton from the electron to positron. Mm -hmm. how, how can we reconcile this or do you, do you have any idea to understand uh, I think, uh, yeah, hi by you, how are you? Uh, so I think you ask a good question, but it is thing is to measure, it is measure is so difficult. So as I mentioned earlier, right, that a neutrino, uh, for same number of neutrino produce same charge lepton in the detector, okay? So these kind of detectors we have till now, we can measure actually say this kind of flavor. We don't, cannot measure helicity states or we don't cannot measure that if you are a helicity state because the question you are asking, it is more of the experimental side. So we have an experimental limitation for time being. 
the theoretically this question what you are asking is, is a, these are valid question but i experimentally i think this is a challenge and experimentally should measure that if your left hand helicity is coming can you measure right hand helicity that means charge left uh, anti particle if you measure charge anti particle can you confirm that it is coming from your negative helicity states that is a till i think far question to answer and um, you understand right yeah yeah by the way can you go to the uh, the uh, the, the the three uh, uh, solution that you have when you yeah, plot yeah. the delta CP and mm, this one uh, yeah yeah this one this one. Mm -hmm. yeah this one mm -hmm. why, why there is only three here why there is no uh, uh, other the, the, uh, above above this uh, yeah yeah this above. is a good good question you ask so that is question uh, and maybe I can refer you you can see our paper but as I mentioned this is depends on your what is your true value okay you can consider maybe some different true value okay maybe here then you can sign uh, the solution arising here they are blah blah place so for this particular value you only see three solution okay in theory theory you can have a eight solution but for a particular point of view experiment cannot see a, uh, of course uh, uh, out of these eight experiment only see two solutions so it is good for experiment so that also depends on your correct value which is your exact true point you choose different true point you may end up with different solution okay but uh, you, you just in your slide you just mentioned that the delta cp is now mm -hmm. is favoring uh, 100 uh, 200 something yes why yeah. do you see nine minus 90 uh, uh no it is uh, 270 is minus 90 right oh yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. so it is now below and so this is i think uh, uh if you uh, notice recently so this is i am quoting the y group of uh, the 2017 and they recently i think last month they actually released their new data and which is actually telling their best fit is around minus one, uh, 100 190 uh, Eduardo, did you notice that which is around 180, which is very low? So they are actually ruling out the delta C minus 90. Uh, uh, but uh, those those numbers, uh, I think they they updated right this. this That's year. what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling. This is 2017. I am, yeah. I am just for flavor, just general audience. But new number is this 238 is now around minus 100, 190. So it is coming. Uh, People are thinking few years back, right, around 270. Now it is coming down around 180. So, uh, you know, things are changing. More question. Well, Wolfgang say that chirality and helicity are the same in case of massless particles. Exactly. Is... For massless, it is the same. But now we know for neutrinos, there is a finite mass here. So in the next lecture for neutrino mass, I will be talking about a little bit details of this chirality and helicity. More questions? Well, I, I, I mean, in, in your, what one? Sorry, if, if I can just clarify, uh, the, I think you, you misquoted me a little. I tried to emphasize that chirality and helicity are in general not the same. You should distinguish them. They only uh, go yes, yes. in particular exactly. case of massless yes, yes. particles. And now you say uh, the chirality it's a fixed property of a particle. It's like a cloth. You have either left hand and right hand, and you can turn it and move it as you like. It will never change. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, the helicity, on the other hand, this is the map of the, the, the projection of the spin and the direction of motion. And this, um, in for a massive particle, depends on your reference frame. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the question was, you cannot transform, even if neutrinos have mass, uh, they, they, you cannot transform a left-handed into a right-handed neutrino. <clears throat> just by move by going to a different reference frame same as okay let's say for an electron uh, okay you 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 could you, you can you could change the helicity but you cannot change the causality because the left hand it has a different hypercharge than the right hand it for instance mm -hmm. so so this uh, the causality is really attached to the particle and cannot be been changed i think that was the the answer to the previous question yeah? okay okay thanks So more questions? When, when you mentioned Newton at the very end, uh, uh -huh. the, the, this, the genesis, uh -huh. how the forthcoming experiments like Dune or Hyper-K, or even the, the coherent experiments, 
uh, could could help to yeah so to disentangle uh, some, this yes uh, exact example maybe uh, in the third lecture I'll show with the exact okay. example because this again it is by simulation you can see actually okay because Dune has a more matter effect more uh, statistically high potential detector so they can constrain parameter space nicely in the third lecture it will be more clear clear. So, so okay, for timing, uh, I can say here that for Dune, if you measure this, so by Dune itself, it will rule out this parameter space. Okay. Okay. And, but what if uh, we have non-standard neutrino interactions? It's mm. also changed, right? Exactly, yes. So that is what I am, I told you answer, it is for the standard. If, if you again uh, add non-standard, then things will change, yes. There, I think in the one of lecture, your lectures is about NSI, fourth lecture, right? Yes, fourth lecture. Yes. So the students, question from the students. Then that means I, I guess that everybody understood. Javier? Javier, Javier. How do you see the flag? In the in the participants, ah, okay. if you I open the participants, I have, I have shared the screen there, so I could not see. I think. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, can we know something about the nature of neutrinos? Yes. Uh, yes. With uh, oscillation experiments, or no, or we no, need another thing? No. No. Uh, only neutrinos Nothing. double beta decay. Okay. Not by oscillation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then when you showed at the beginning the energies of the neutrinos, uh -huh. I was curious. I was curious what what is the mechanism, or or one of the possible mechanisms uh -huh. of production of extragalactic neutrinos. Yeah, very nice question. This is recently what we talked about. Edward, I remember this for glacial resonance. So, for the very high energetic neutrinos, only experiments that measure PEB energy of neutrinos is this uh, ice cube. Yeah. Here, uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, no, I think this picture doesn't show you, sorry. Yes, about the, the production. Yeah, yes. Production, so this is production mechanism is like proton-proton uh, uh, neutrino collisions, proton-proton collisions. So these are the various production mechanism people are studying now. And though we know some of them, but exactly at which production mechanism creating at which energy is still people are undergoing. But proton-proton, proton-proton are the major channels. Okay, okay. Uh, to create this kind of high energy tick. yes. Okay. So this is the interesting, uh, this is a very interesting question also you asked because uh, see neutrino is very elusive uh, or, uh, and this is very weakly interacting, very difficult to detect. That means it can travel uh, information from very supergalactic or, uh, you know, supernovae, different stars. So we can have information of those uh, extragalactic objects in our art and we can measure those neutrino and we can study those objects. We can study pro how the neutrinos produce on those objects also. So this is a very interesting, yes. I have one more, can I? Can I? Ask? Yes, yes, sure. sure. Okay, uh, uh, if you add like um, non-standard interactions, like for example, the scalar and tensors, mm -hmm. uh, is something changed in the, in the, in the parameters of, 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 of neutrino oscillations or so, we cannot yeah, yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, only thing, as I mentioned, so, so basic things, what will change? Your first question. So you can see this is the thing. Only thing you will change your uh, this uh, interaction part. So here, uh, this is part is vacuum. Then I use matter interaction. When you add more exotic like scalar or tensor or whatever, this uh, everything will add here and here. And this add uh, will make your Hamiltonian more complicated. You have to solve Hamiltonian to find probability things will more complicated. That is how it appears. Okay. Thank you. Okay. More questions to Newton? Uh, do you allow a short uh, question about Paulus letter? Yeah, sure. yeah, sure, 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 please. 
Could we you go can... back to this? Yes, page? yes, yes, yes. Uh, because I know this letter, even in the original, and uh, a particle that cannot be detected is something which is often quoted, but this is not in this letter and it is not documented anywhere. I searched yeah. for it once. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Please check yeah. the translation yeah. of this letter. The, what, the, what you wrote here on the right hand side has not has nothing to do with the with the with the letter of Pauli. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I agree with you. This is an uh, people quote this one, and as I mentioned, that these letters was actually not written in English. Uh, there is, uh, if you convert also in English, there is no directly. It is not saying that it is very difficult to detect, and I have done something blah blah mistake. But essence of this, this actually is saying essence of that letter is something like we have a detected a particle which is very difficult to say. That I agree with you. It is not one to one. Yeah, I, I know the I know both the original and German and, yes, yes. <laughs> and I know this is a this is a might uh, something which is often quoted but uh, exactly uh, yes. Volkan, uh, I, I think I think this this phrase should be after the computation of the cross section by Bette and Pyles. Yeah. Okay. okay. First, yeah. it is not in this letter, and then I I no. tried to search uh, because I wrote once a, a, a review about this, and then I I searched for this citation everywhere. And uh, um, okay, it is often quoted, but it is not not documented. I, I think it should come yeah. after after the computation because when they compute the the cross section, it was ridiculous. Well, really. if, you, if you find if you find a source for sure. this citation please send it to me <laughs> so i i know the the, the paper by Beth, but this this quotation i think it should come afterwards not yes, it, not in this letter exactly that's true yeah but but if you find the source for this quotation please send it to send me the source I, sure. I, I was not able to find it okay more questions i'm sorry Yes. yes. Uh, could you please uh, again uh, explain ah. to me why, why people uh, 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 well, come up yeah. with the idea that neurons in fire and also violate in the neutrino? Sorry, sorry. The Lorentz violation in neutrino. Why? Why? What is the motivation people uh, come up with this idea in the neutrino? Ah. Okay. Motivation. Okay, okay. In my future, uh, sorry, unknown question I ask you, right? You are asking this one, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know exactly. Like people are talking about, like, if uh, in the neutrino sector uh, there is a CP violation, can there be possibility of CPT? As you know, in the standard model, it is not possible. Like. Uh, but maybe from some other new physics or new interaction, maybe Lorentz violation can possible or CPT. I don't know exactly. May I comment on that? Yes, yes, sure, sure. Please. There is one line of approach to violate uh, Lorentz invariance by introducing a, a specific maximal attainable velocity to each type of particle, which can differ from the speed of light. This was put forward by, Cla by Coleman and Glashow, and it was popular for some time based on cosmic rays and so on. Now, if one believes in that, then one could also attach to each neutrino flavor a part uh, its own maximal attainable velocity. And then one could even try to explain uh, a neutrino oscillation without masses, but only with different maximal attainable velocities. This, this was fashion around yeah, some 20 years ago, a bit more now. Now it's, it's not so much fashionable anymore because these uh, cosmic ray ex experiments that they refer to were not, uh, were, not, were, not conf con uh, were not confirmed, but I think this, this is the idea behind it. Uh, okay. But, but, but is, it, is it doable in the, in, in the framework of the QFT? Well, uh, as you know, if if you have a, a local Lorentz invariant uh, quantum field theory, doesn't need to be the standard model. Then CPT is an in, in CPT invariance is an inevitable consequence. Now, yes. okay. Uh, now, of course, then people try to attack Lorentz invariance also then to have an option for CPT, and then. Okay, if, if you have to give up something really strong like locality or to to uh, to get around it, so 
So that's <laughs> that's what I can say. Of course, you can imagine, you can propose anything, but you have to. It really takes a, a tremendous change of paradigm to to be able to to get to this point. So, so, so one of the implication of the violating Lorentz and Farin will be non-locality of the quantum field theory, right? Yes, yes. If you, uh, well, maybe, yeah, probably it is inevitable that you introduce non-locality, but then you're actually. Um, you, you have to deal with a lot of questions <laughs> if you give up on locality. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, yeah. Then uh, you know that, that this is the base of causality and everything. Then you're you're confronted with a lot of, of issues if you want to give, to give up locality. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Yes. yes. Uh, about the cosmic background neutrino. They have not uh, been detected yet. So it's only an hypothesis. So uh, I am wrong. Mm, sorry, right. sorry. Oh. Yes. yes. About the cosmic yeah. background neutrinos. You yeah. talk about the yeah. big, big bang neutrinos, but they are not detected yet. They are only an hypothesis. Yes. For big bang, yes. 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 yes, yes, this is right. It's very difficult to detect because they have very low energy. Mm -hmm. So to, to detect a neutrino takes certain energy, and so it's very difficult to detect. Uh, nevertheless, uh, one year ago, or almost two years ago, actually, there was a nature paper where they constrained the number of effective, I mean, these cos uh, cosmic neutrinos from uh, baryon acoustic oscillations. Thank you very much. So not direct measurement, but there are some, some effects. Sebastian, yes, can you yes, comment on that? Yeah, yes, 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 of course. So it was the first detection of, of uh, um, so it's uh, in the free space, it was a phase shift on the BAO, but it corresponds to a time shift if you take a look to the, to the conformal space. Uh, but but the idea it, it was a first detection, so it's, it it is a real detection uh, corresponding to the decoupling of the neutrinos with uh, uh, with the photons through uh, through the baryons. In fact, so in fact, just because you have a small time uh, time shift in in this decoupling, so if you take or if you don't take in take uh, or or if you don't take into account uh, this effect on on the BAO analysis, so for it's true for uh, the BAO on galaxy distribution and on CMB too. Uh, so you can detect this variation. It was first detected uh, two years ago uh, in BAO uh, of the galaxies by this group. So I don't know if it was clear or not. Sorry. Yes, thank you. More questions? Well, maybe we can stop and, and continue on uh, Thursday. Yes. Uh, by the way, all the lectures are on Monday and Thursday. Yes. Uh, yeah, there was a this mistake for the there is no lecture on 16, right? 16 should be instead of 19. 19, yes. In the email, I think. But in the plan, the plan the PDF, PDF is, is correct. Yes. correct. OK, I, I will stop the recording.